This is my project entitled Treading in Murky Water. For my project, what I decided to do was to develop a system for determining the health of an estuary based on bioindicators found in fish. The first thing I did was I had to choose which estuaries I was going to focus on. I discussed the environmental parameters found within several different estuaries located in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. I looked at pH, salinity, and dissolved oxygen content. From there, I chose three different estuaries, Myra River, Sydney River, and the Sydney Tarpons. I was able to rank each of these estuaries based on their health. Myra River was given a three, being the healthiest, followed by Sydney River with a two, and the Sydney Tarpons with a one. The fish type of fish which I chose is called Fungulus heteroclitus, or mummy chog. They're a small prey fish of about 40 to 60 millimeters long. This is a graph showing the different weights of the mummy chog found in each of the estuaries. Myra River was the heaviest, followed by Sydney River and the Sydney Tarpons. I also analyzed the standard length of the fish, which is the measurement from above the caudal fin to the snout. For standard length, Myra River was the longest, followed by Sydney River and the Sydney Tarpons. However, I did a further analysis looking at the actual volume of the fish, trying to prove whether or not Tarpons fish were emaciated in comparison with the other estuaries. This is the condition factor analysis, which is actually a volume analysis of the fish. It consists of multiplying the weight by 100 and dividing by the length cubed. As you can see here, Myra River had the highest value, followed by Sydney River and the Sydney Tarpons. In a rank, Myra River would receive a 3, Sydney River a 2, and the Sydney Tarpons a 1, showing that the Sydney Tarpons were emaciated in comparison with the other two estuaries, and Myra River being the plumpest. I also examined the growth rates of the fish in each of the estuaries. I plotted weight versus standard length, and then took the log of each size to produce a linear graph. Here you can see that Sydney River grows at a faster rate than the Sydney Tarpons, and Myra River grows at a faster rate than Sydney River. Again, I was able to rank the estuaries. Myra River received a 3, Sydney River received a 2, and the Sydney Tarpons received a 1. The next step of my project was to actually do some dissection. I extracted both the liver and the gonads from the fish. This is a graph showing the liver somatic index which is basically an analysis of the weight of the liver divided by the total weight of the fish multiplied by 100. The liver is the detoxification center of the body. Therefore, a higher liver somatic index would indicate that there are more toxins present in the estuary. Therefore, the fish and the estuary would be less healthy. Here you can see that the tarpons had a high liver somatic index. In fact, they had the highest. However, they were followed closely by Myra River. On further dissection of the Myra River livers, there was actually parasites found within them, which would have added to the total weight. The ranking here would be Sydney Tarpons with a 1, Myra River with a 2, and Sydney River with a 3. I also analyzed the gonad somatic index, which, like the liver somatic index, is the weight of the gonads divided by the total weight of the fish multiplied by 100. If an organism is in a healthy environment, they're able to devote more energy towards reproduction. As you can see here, the Sydney tarpons had the highest gonad somatic index, which is very strange. However, with further analysis of the eggs of Sydney tarpons fish, they were actually green. Normal mummy chog eggs, or fungulus heteroclitus, are beige, as they were in Myra River and Sydney River. What's actually happening is that the fish are expulsing contaminants through the production of eggs. It's almost as if it's an all or nothing response. Because they're in such a contaminated environment, they put all of their energy towards reproduction. However, my goal in this project was to create a method to determine the health of an estuary. So based on literature, I would give the Sydney Tarpons a 3, Myra River a 2, and the Sydney River a 1. The next and final analysis that I looked at was a general subjective caudal fin analysis. As you can see, the normal caudal fin ray of a mummy chog has straight caudal fin rays and they're fanned which closely resembles that of the Myra River caudal fin rays. As well, there are the Sydney River caudal fin rays, which are straight but tightly banded together. And the Sydney Tarpon caudal fins are very damaged and even deformed. So again, you can rate the estuaries. Myra River would receive a 3, Sydney Tarpons would receive a 1, and Sydney River would receive a 2. For my final conclusions and analysis, I did a rank analysis. As you can see here, I tallied the total values for each of the estuaries, and divided by the total number possible, and then multiplied by 100 to receive a percentage. 
The final results show that Myra River received an 87%, Sydney River a 67%, and the Sydney Terrapons a 47%. This project also has further applications. Local community members could actually perform a lot of this methodology rather simply, with little training. They could place the information in a database for scientific researchers to analyze. In this way, cost-effectively, we could monitor the health of our local estuaries.